my name's Trish. I take care of my brother, Robert, and uh, he's actually had lifelong uncontrolled epilepsy. Mm. He's 47 years old now. Mm. Um, and I write about our experiences um, at robertsister.com. I will just lay it out there. I know nothing about golf, so I had to study before I <laughs> talk Perfect. to you. <laughs> so, uh, actually, I have questions for both of you, but uh, Mr. Clark, I'll start with you, if you don't mind. Sure. Okay, so... As a sister caring for my brother, I'm curious if you have any siblings and how having epilepsy has affected your relationship with them. Yes, I have two brothers. And uh, yeah, I mean, um, they live in New York and in LA, but uh, thank goodness my parents um, live about a half an hour from me and then my wife's parents live four houses down. So um, I got a great support team around me and uh, my brothers have been very supportive even though they're they're far away with me being living in Jacksonville, Florida. But um, yeah, it's very key to have uh, a great support team and it's, it's great that you're able to uh, help your brother. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's good. That's, that's great that you, it does sound like you have a, a wonderful support mm -hmm. um, group. Um, so I also understand that you're a dad and uh, uh, obviously a husband and athlete. Mm -hmm. So your wife is in the role of your caregiver right. and I assume I assume your kids have seen you have seizures. Yes, my uh, eight-year-old boy uh, knows what's going on, and uh, which has been challenging for sure, knowing that his his dad has epilepsy and stuff. And my, you know, my four-year-old girl, she's you know getting to that age now where she knows what's going on. But for the past year, uh, my seizures have been under control with the medicines my doctor and I have have uh, have been on. So oh, that's um, it, it's, it's that's helped great. out a lot, and that's why we're here today to talk about our time, our, our pledge, uh, dot com, and to let know, people know that uh, there's, uh, you know, they can do a lot more than uh, just settling for just feeling all right. Yeah, absolutely, um, and I appreciate you, you getting the word out about that. I, I did look at your website mm -hmm. and uh, saw your wife's um, mm -hmm. about your seizures and um, uh, it, it looked at going beyond okay.com so right. that, that was great uh, one thing she said was that you sometimes have a chuckle as right. a part of your seizure right. my brother actually does that too he has a he has complex partial right. seizures and when he's coming out of it he'll he'll giggle right 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 for so, sure uh, yeah. those are the one you know those are the ones I have and uh, you know it's 2010 Christmas Eve 2010 and then you know, I kept having them into into eleven, and then we decided, you know, it's time to get some some uh, go to a uh, my neurologist, and then we ended up going to epileptologist and being <clears throat> persistent on getting the best care I can. And uh, so, you know, it took some work um, to get in and see a lot of the doctors. Don't get me wrong, but uh, we were very persistent, and uh, I'm in good hands now, and uh, you know, things have been going all right. Yeah, that, that's great. It, it, persistence does is so important. Mm -hmm. You just have to like not take no for an answer. Right? Absolutely, I think a lot of times, you can't say yeah. no if a doctor says you can't. They can't get you in their their full. You know, you just go around another way and uh, you, right. you try to get in. You know, use all the angles about it to get in and see the see the best doctors. <clears throat> Absolutely. So, um, what treatments have you used, uh, and what are you currently using, and, and what are you considering for the future? Well, my doctor and I, we have we're on some, uh, you know, some medication. You know, I currently take the medication uh, Vimpat, which has been which has helped me out a lot. But there's not a, with there's not a cure for epilepsy, and all the patients, all the you know, all of us have different side effects to, um, you know, all these medicines, and. Right, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean the side effects are amazing, and especially when it comes to me with playing golf, the side effects are very important, and um, that's why I've really spent time with my doctors figuring out a, you know, the times for me to take my medicine and um, going from there. Because so when I go play golf, um, especially early in the morning, I have to make sure that I drink a lot of water and eat some food, because uh, you know with the, a lot of these medicines, the side effects are, are dizziness and. Uh, double vision so if I go out there and, and uh, don't take any eat anything or drink you know I'll get dizzy and and uh, stuff like that so I really um, have to be really diligent about you know doing that otherwise you know I won't be able to perform at the level I'm able to 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and timing of seizure medication is, um, is critical and is different, like you said, for everyone. Right, for sure. And uh, so, oh, go ahead. No, sorry, go ahead. Um, I was just going to ask, you were talking about, um, about golfing, and uh, I wanted to know how challenging it is to have epilepsy while also mm -hmm. being an elite athlete mm -hmm. in a very public sport. And epilepsy is, um, there's, there's just a lot of mis and um, misnomers surrounding epilepsy, I think. No question about it. And uh, the thing that's, I've been, you know, I've never been shy to talk about anything, whether, and, uh, you know, I, and I, a lot of people are embarrassed to even talk about epilepsy, but I haven't, I'm not embarrassed to talk about it, and that's why we're here talking about our time, ourpledge.com. And, um, you know, that's the only way you're gonna get it, get it better. And uh, you just can't, you gotta be passionate about, about uh, getting better. That's the bottom line, really talking to your neurologist, getting to understand epilepsy, and, uh, you know, the communication with your doctor is very, very important, and uh, that's what we really try to do. Yeah, well, I appreciate what you're doing because it, it is uh, difficult, and, and you are, you know, in the public eye, so that that must be difficult and, and more. Uh, I just think it's really courageous that what you're doing and, and appreciate um, you getting the word out and trying to raise epilepsy awareness. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Sure. Um, so what do you – I just have a few more questions, and then I'll uh, go to uh, the doctor. Um, what do you hope to teach your kids about epilepsy? Well, I mean, the fact that they, they see their dad, you know, they've, you know when I, ha I had my um, brain surgery to locate where my seizures were coming from, you know, they came and saw me in the hospital and, uh, and stuff like that. So, you know, I teach them about, what I'm te teaching about is, you know, you have to be persistent. You can never give up. And uh, it's more about daily, everyday life than it is really about epilepsy. And um, to show them that, you know, persistence, um, you know, is a, is a great thing, can really, you know, never give up. But, um, you know, realize that uh, a lot of people have problems out there, but, um, you know, they live a, just a very normal life. My life is just as normal as everybody else, except I take medicine. And, um, you know, even though I couldn't drive for two years, you know, now I'm able to drive again um, since my seizures have, have uh, been under control. And, uh, you know, there's, like I said, there's no cure for epilepsy and all the medicines have different side effects. But uh, so far it's, it's, been, uh, it's been going well and hopefully it keeps, we're on that track. Yeah, absolutely. I hope the same for you. Um, so has epilepsy affected your purpose in life, do you think? No, not, I mean, in a positive way, if anything, and uh, mm -hmm. to help other people out um, who have, you know, epilepsy or any other type of problem because um, so many people I've even talked to, they don't take their medicine on time, they're embarrassed to talk about it, and uh, that's where the support team that I have around me has just been awesome. And uh, it's been with the people on the PGA Tour, the web.com tour, the players, the staff, um, different tournaments have had, you know, Epilepsy Day, you know, which can't ask for anything like that, ever dream of anything like that, so I mean, it, uh, using this all to a positive and hopefully to help other people out as well. Yeah, that's terrific. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. um, can, is there time for just a couple questions for Dr. Benedetti's? It's okay with me. You can say time for one question. Yeah, okay, uh, great. Um, what I was curious about is what do you see as the future of epilepsy treatment and research? Well, there is a lot going on in the epilepsy field, and this is important because one of the one of the things about the pledge is to uh, disseminate the message that there are treatments beyond medications when medications don't work. So, the areas that are most promising are improvements in epilepsy surgery, localizing where the seizures are coming from when they are focal, and localizing them safely and accurately for the purpose of epilepsy surgery. There are new medications coming. There are new uh, neurostimulation uh, techniques uh, that are halfway between medications and epilepsy surgeries, if you will, like, like deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's, for example. So different ways of stimulating the brain, and there will be other modalities coming out. So there's a lot of things evolving in the field. That's 
Which is fantastic. Um, the What I get frustrated about is that there's not a lot of funding for epilepsy research, or I feel like there should be more funding. Um, what do you think we can do to get more funding for epilepsy research? Get more people like Jeff to uh, <laughs> talk about it, high-profile <laughs> people. The, the, the difficulty is that with epilepsy, as Jeff alluded to, unlike Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, uh, is not something that patients that are high profile are willing to speak about openly. Yes. So yeah. th that's one of the challenges. Epilepsy is getting some research uh, funding, but it's never enough. And, and if we had more high profile uh, patients like Jeff, it would help. Absolutely. Well, I, I really appreciate your time and uh, thank you for for getting the word out and for um, for all you do for uh, for epilepsy and, and treating epilepsy. I really appreciate that. Thank you for, having, for us. having us. All right. Thank you both.